Welcome back. Hi, I'm Lisa Chrysler, and you are in for a fabulous community storytelling episode. And I'll tell you why in a second. But I got to tell you first, it's brought to you by my good friend Linda Lester and Lester Square. So we thank you for that. But now, I don't know, I've always wanted to interview this woman. I've been at her place so many times, as have you. Let's see, what else can I say to maybe give it away? I think of her as Miss Los Gatos, and this may end up as one of my favorite interviews. Okay, so now you know it's Terry Hope, right? Terry Hope. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. I cannot tell you how many people have been sitting where you are and say to me, have you interviewed Terry Hope? Or they mention you while I'm interviewing them. So what is it about you? I don't know. What is it about you? Nothing. I'm sitting I'm here interviewing you. <laughs> I've been your fan for oh, many, many thank years. You. Thank yeah. you. Well, we are Facebook friends. <laughs> yes, we, we are. are. And more than that. Yes, so. yeah. I do consider you Miss Los Gatos. And I think a lot of people do because where should we begin? How old is Los Gatos Roasting Company? Oh, 38 years now. 38 years. You're the original. That's right. <laughs> and, and I know it's expanded. Yes. And then you kind of made it a little smaller again and then yes. brought in wine recently <laughs> yeah we have a wine local santa cruz mountain wines and entertainment four nights a week yeah. how's that going it's just uh, beyond my expectations yeah? really I, I think i keep creating little monsters you know and that's what, that's why that's why we all love you oh my goodness but we're going to go back to the beginning okay. we're going way back we're uh -oh. way back you were born in los gatos i was born yeah in los gatos i my folks moved here from Santa Cruz back in the early 50s, and so I was born and raised in Los Gatos and went to St. Mary's Grammar School. So where exactly in Los Gatos? Well, actually, in what I like to say was in Monticerino, before it was Monticerino. So you were, you were, you were yeah. a no man's land, no that, woman's land. That's right. <laughs> uh, I was, we had an old farmhouse that was nestled between the old dairy farm and a chicken farm. So I really grew up in what I considered those the country and Los Gatos and Silicon Valley was really all orchards and vineyards and j just very, very country. You didn't have to go far for your milk or for your eggs. That's exactly right. right. You, you know, know, I collected eggs for the egg lady and my dad and I used to drive the milk route on Saturday mornings and no. I would deliver the bottles of milk to the front oh. porches and collect the um, uh, empties. <laughs> Don't you sort of wish you still got milk in a glass bottle and it was on your porch? Believe me, yes. I, I yes. wish somebody would deliver to me. I do have an egg lady who delivers uh, eggs to my house, yeah. <laughs> but um, if I can get a glass a bottle of milk, um, I do. <laughs> uh, wow, I know. Yeah. That, that was heaven. Yeah. That was heaven. Yeah. We had birthday Fair. farms growing up. Yeah. And I remember just magically appear on the porch. Yeah. It was yeah. so nice. Those were the good old days. And then I found out we actually had to pay for it. That was yeah. <laughs> then I said, okay, maybe it's not so big. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to St. Mary's and That's then right. you went across the border. Right. Um, all my uh, fellow classmates went to Las Gatas High School and I went off to Westmont because I was living out on the border of Los Gatos, uh, which was in the Campbell School District. So I went to Westmont High School. How many siblings in your family? Nine kids. Yeah, including Nine? me. Yes. Yes. And I hope they're all alive. Yes, they're all alive and well, yes. Uh, do they all live around here? No, no one lives here anymore. They all, well, my parents, uh, some years ago, I took them on a trip to Hawaii and showed them around. And it was kind of a coffee trip for me, but I showed them around and they fell in love with the island of the big island. And they ended up just moving over there in their retirement. And uh, then my other siblings uh, progressively followed them. So I have several siblings living over there. And then one, my older sister lives in uh, Southern California and one of my brothers lives up in Northern so, California. So they're drinking Kona coffee. That's right, they are. Which one is better, Los Gatos roasting or, or Kona well, coffee? Well, you know, I have the Kona coffee at Los Gatos. <laughs> and, and just by coincidence, uh, my dad, who's always been my mentor and very industrious guy. Um, he decided to try his hand at growing coffee no. in, uh, in Kona. So in his retirement, started a little farm. And then I bought a little farm and some acreage next to his. And we, we grew the, you know, the, the whole th thing from scratch. I wanted to be you know, kind of like the out of Africa story. I wanted to, you know. <laughs> out of Hawaii. Yeah, yeah but in Hawaii, <laughs> I, I wanted to, uh, you know, plant the trees and grow them from babies um, and, and bring them to uh, the, you know, full uh, uh, 
place where we could um, start harvesting sure. them and carry them in my store, which we have done. So, oh my gosh, yeah, what's yes. the label? What's it's the label? Hope Family Farms. Yeah, no, yeah. that is yeah. great. I love that. <laughs> but now along the way, Westmont High School, I hope yeah. you don't get mad at me because I a lot of times say things I shouldn't. <laughs> but I know that somewhere along the way, you had a child. I did. I did. How you old know, were you? I was uh, almost 18. Had you graduated No. Yet? Did you graduate? <laughs> Actually, the, the dirty little secret is no, I didn't graduate from high school. But you did all of this without a high school diploma? It, yes. <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't <laughs> recommend it to anybody. <laughs> Get your education. Don't be like me. But um, I did not finish high school. And I went straight to work and to raise my daughter and... Uh, you know, make my way in life. Did you ever have any doubt when you were pregnant that you were not going to keep her, or you just said, "This is my daughter"? I'm oh my mom. gosh! I, I, you know, to me it was a blessing. Yeah. And uh, she's like my motivation in life. Wow. And was it a blessing to your parents? No. <laughs> <laughs> they were not happy with me, and really kind of. Uh, 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 chided me for a few years and and let me struggle and let you in struggle. the world yes yeah you know um it wasn't a happy thing for them but but over the course of time and i think part of my motivation in life has always been to redeem myself with my parents i think you have and yeah. and with some despair with a lot yes, to yeah, spare yeah. so they like me now but boy they had to change your life to be 18 years old Single mom, mm -hmm. little girl, you got to raise, and you mm -hmm. want, and you want everything for her. Yes. How? Where did you work? How did well, that work like out? Well, like I said, I would. It, it was very, very motivating. Um, in the early days, I had multiple jobs. I did everything from house cleaning to re working in a retail store, waitressing. I did a lot of different things, and then I um, went back to school for a little while and got my, uh, uh, you know, uh, an AA. And I went uh, t to become working in the medical field. I was kind of inspired to work in women's health care. So um, I worked for a women's health care center for 10 years um, and kind of worked my way up in that organization. And family planning and all that was became, you know, really an important thing in my yeah. life because of my life experience. And have you along the way spoken to NWED teens and... Yes, Young many, women many and times. I, I bet you were their mentor. <laughs> yes, I have. You have yeah. such a fabulous yeah. story to share. Yeah, and you know, I've had, you know, some ups and downs. People have, yes, truly, and I, I worked with other women, you know, who I've kind of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, tried to shepherd along through the process, you know. And your daughter's here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my daughter. I'm so proud of my daughter. She hasn't really followed in my footsteps. Uh, she says, Mom, I don't want to do what you do because you work too hard. <laughs> but uh, she uh, has been a very successful uh, hairstylist. So I think she, she works yeah. hard, too. <laughs> yeah. She started a, 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 a salon called Tangles many years ago, just a few doors down from my business. And, and then she sold the business, and then she started a... a a um, boutique and then another hair salon and then she bought back Tangles and ran that for some years and then recently ha has kind of um, wound down a little bit and resold the business again so she's uh, she is just uh, I'm just so proud of her she's a wonderful wonderful young lady and um, and she's a great mom too she I have a granddaughter who's almost 12 years old three musketeers yeah I can see it yeah. right now I mean when you're with your daughter people must say are you sisters sometimes you know and one time she got carded and and and, or I got carded and she didn't <laughs> when we were at a at a restaurant and that was funny you know yeah sure <laughs> do you see her like almost every day we do we talk on the phone almost every day oh. and I take care of Devin uh, one day a week since the day she was born so yeah we're really close really really close reminds me of me and my daughters and it, it just all I almost yeah. want to tear up yeah to, to hear about that life yeah. that you had it had to be have its up and downs raising a daughter yes. so close to your own age. You weren't even grown up yet. It, it, true, but it makes you grow up fast. Yeah. You know when you become a, mo a mom or a parent, there's just this 
I think a switch goes off on your, you know, um, maturity, and you have a purpose in life, and 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 that becomes your primary right. uh, focus uh, to to care for your child and to make the best life you can for them, and and be a, the did. best role model you can be. Which yeah. you did. Yeah. So how did you get into the coffee business? <laughs> what made you think I'm going to open up a, a coffee roasting company? Yeah. Well. While I was working at my other job, um, I used to drive to San Francisco and go to North Beach, which was my like equivalent of going to Italy, um, and have a cappuccino and go to my favorite little coffee roasters, Grafeos, and get a pound of fresh roasted coffee and then bring it back to Los Gatos. And at a point, I said, gosh, I, I'm making a hundred mile round trip to get a pound of fresh roasted coffee and a cappuccino. And I sure wish there was something like that here in Los Gatos. And at that point in time, there was a little tiny shop on Main Street, right where my store is today. And it was called Caldi's Coffee, Tea and Spice. And occasionally I would go there because they did carry the Grafeo's coffee mm -hmm. that I loved. <laughs> and they weren't roasting and they didn't have an espresso bar. And every time I went in there and I said, gosh, you know, if this was my business, I would, you know, uh, feature the coffee more prominently and I would roast my own and I would, you know, do blends. I, you know, I just had these ideas that were going on in my head and I heard through the grapevine that um, the business was going to be for sale. And the person who had started it, Ron Gates, who's a great guy and he had a real estate company here in Los Gatos, he had started the little company because he loved coffee and I, I, met with him and talked to him about acquiring the lease and the business and what my plans were. And he, um, he you know, sold it to me for very modest amount of money. It's certainly in today's terms. Um, I assumed the lease and uh, then I started putting together all of the ideas that I had um, to uh, put in a coffee roaster, putting in an espresso machine, and sourcing in my own green beans. And so it was kind of a self-taught period of time for me where I did a lot of researching and, and um, I had a lot of naysayers. And the only person in my life that was really said it's a good idea was my father. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. And well, that's he, a great yeah. story. He said, Terry, he goes, I, I think maybe you got a good idea there. And, it, you know, you work so hard for other people and you're so, you know, diligent and committed to, you know, whatever you set out to, I just know you're going to be successful. So. Was it successful right away or did you struggle <laughs> for many years and then I, all of a sudden, boom? I did struggle for a few years, for like the first five years. And um, how old was your daughter then? She was 12. So yeah, yeah. still young? Yeah. And, uh, but she would, she was going to, uh, uh, Los, she went to uh, Fisher Junior High School and she, every day after school she would walk down and do her homework in the back room. and and kind of grew up in the back room of the coffee house. <laughs> and then yes. you opened yeah. other coffee houses. That's right. About five years into um, my operating my business, I had gotten some good media and I had um, a very good following. It, matter of fact, the business was growing so fast it was really hard to manage it and fund it because it was mushrooming. And at that point in time, I got a visit from, who the, at that time, the director of Stanford Shopping Center, uh, a woman named Rosemary McAndrews. And she came to my store and she said, you know, I wanted to meet you, I love what you're doing here, and I want you to open a coffee house in Stanford Shopping Center. And I'm like, oh gosh, I got my hands full, I don't have any money to expand, I just can't even imagine that. But she was very persistent and she said, we want to mentor you, we want you to be in our shopping center and I like to incubate little businesses like this, so please come join us. And What year was that? That was 1987. Yeah. And where were you in Stanford Shopping Center? In what was to become, I was the first of many businesses that became the street market at Stanford Shopping okay. Center. Okay, got it, yeah, got yeah. it. And then you opened another one. <laughs> yes, then I, <laughs> I um, opened a, a place in Aptos um, called Pacific Coffee Roasting. Um, one of my brothers had come to work for me and was roasting coffee for me. My brother Tom, he and I have always been really close. And I had taught him to roast coffee and he wanted to open his own place. So together he and I opened Pacific Coffee Roasting Company. And some years down the road then I did uh, sell off my portion to him and he's independent and still running that company. And I also opened a couple more shops, one in Carmel and a second one in, in 
Palo Alto. Is the one in Carmel still I open? sold it. You I sold, sold it, but it's still there. But just one now. <laughs> yes, yes. I kind of got downsized. Um, the Stanford store, when the Stanford Shopping Center was sold, I'd already been in business mm -hmm. 18 years there. The new owners of the shopping center, um, they owned multiple shopping centers, and they had a Starbucks in every single one. And they really wanted to replace me with a Starbucks and so they just kind of gave me my walk-in papers and so I said adios to that but that was simultaneous to my granddaughter being born so then you had more important things yeah more important so I was things. thinking how am I gonna find the time to yeah. give to this new grandchild and so the universe just kind of put into play you know uh, downsizing me and that was a blessing because that gave me the time to commit to my granddaughter. Do you work seven days a week? I, well, I kind of do. Yeah, because you <laughs> run in or run out. Yes, close, how yes. close do you live? I live a few blocks. I live just above the high school here on so Bella Vista. So you could walk in Yeah, nice so weather. I walk back and forth on nice weather and so I'm, I can be there, at, you know, at the, at the, at any moment because, you know, in the business we're in, uh, you know, people call in sick, stuff happens, the machine does, won't start, well, you know, stuff happens. So And you're always busy. Yeah, yeah and, and I have a few busy. extracurricular activities too. I yeah. did. Let's talk about those for a moment. Okay. You know, I once read a newspaper article about you, and it was a few years old, and the first line, it said, your name is really Charity and Faith, <laughs> but Terry Hope. I mean, you give so much and do so much in this town. Well... Where do we begin? You know, I feel so blessed to have been born here, to live here and raise my family here. It's just truly a blessing and to have a business here. That I mean, and I guess I started out just doing kind of guerrilla marketing, which is the essence of that is really working with your community, donating your product or, you know, a gift basket or my in my case, coffee to schools, events. And, you know, it's, it, that's a great way of, of of getting your product out in people's hands or mouths. And, um, and so I, I just found that that was a great way of marketing. And I joined the Chamber of Commerce, one of the first things I did. Uh, one of my mentors said, you've got to join the Chamber of Commerce, so I did and got involved and started, I did, when I was first in the Chamber of Commerce, I started the um, horse-drawn carriage project. Yes. That was my pet project. And do we still have in, them? We do. <laughs> and when are they out? Yeah, every Christmas from Thanksgiving through New Year's, the, the carriages are still running. So um, I'm really proud of that, uh, having you know, at least uh, launched it, you know, and uh, have enjoyed it over the years so, so you so every Christmas you're out there well you, you know get the first in the ride, early days for the first five years <laughs> <laughs> I was out there every single night and hitching up the horses and and selling the tickets and 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 loading people in and out but the chamber really has a lot of volunteers now yeah. and, and they completely took it over after about five or six years and and have made it one of their major fundraisers so well, then you got proud of that even bigger things <laughs> Well, I did. I got, I got involved with, um, so in the early days of my business, I used to have live music at my store. And um, the town decided they didn't want small businesses to have entertainment. So there was a moratorium on having live entertainment in small businesses. And so I had curtailed that in my business. But I still felt Los Gatos needed and deserved some live entertainment and cultural uh, nurturing um, with uh, music and the arts. So I joined the Arts Commission, and at the time, the Arts Commission had a little fledgling operation called Music in the Parks. It was in multiple parks around town, and I got involved in that and helped do fundraising and develop that program. And I guess I'm just kind of a, a natural entrepreneur. I, I want to make everything, you know, a little bigger, a little better. And so we, uh, that program developed over a number of years in the plaza. Awesome. Uh, and um, it got to a point where we were doing 10 weeks a year. And it, it really outgrew the plaza. So I asked the town if we could move it to the Civic Center. We did. And it blossomed. And I had many wonderful volunteers that I worked with. And I kind of was off and on with it. But I remember uh, Valerie Hopkins and Marianne Lucchese, um, those people were very instrumental in helping develop that program too and we teamed up and and worked on that um, and w at the point where we moved music in the park to the Civic Center the that left a void in the in the um, 
plaza. So I went to the town and I asked if I could start a jazz series on Wednesday nights because I thought, you know, middle of the week we could use a little extra business coming down. And, and I really love jazz and thought that that would be an interesting idea. And the town said, well, Terry, you can do it if you are a nonprofit, but you can't do it as an individual or as a business. And I said, okay, well, I'll start a nonprofit. <laughs> so I first went to the Chamber of Commerce and the Rotary Club, which I, I was one of the founding members of, and, and they were both nonprofit entities. And I said, will you be the umbrella for this um, music and arts program, the jazz series that I wanted to start? And they said, yes. You know, as long as you do the work <laughs> and you do the fundraising, um, we'll be your umbrella. So for a number of years, um, and I still have a really good working relationship with the um, both the chamber and the um, Las Cas Morning Rotary Club. Many of their volunteers have been they've been putting their summers in for the last 15 years, helping out um, making that program what it is today. So we're going into our 16th annual 16th summer jazz year. series, and I'm so proud of that program. In addition to doing the the, the Wednesday night concerts, uh, we do some fundraising. We're going to have Aaron Neville as our artist for our uh, big gala Fabulous. this year. I'm so excited. Fabulous. He's one of my favorite yeah. artists of all time. Who doesn't love him? Yes, yeah. yeah. And so we raise money um, uh, to put back into the schools. We do some jazz clinics in the schools in the South Bay and um, also a summer uh, jazz camp for kids. We do scholarships and, um, and try to also put, you know, give an opportunity for other nonprofits to have some visibility at the events over the course of the summer. Does so, anybody yeah. ever say no to you? Yes. <laughs> I'm questioning that right now. But, so what's, you know, what's your next big vision? Oh you my have God. Any, got any big ideas, big dreams <sighs> well, for your town? Ah, uh, yeah, I, I do. You know, this is this is home forever. So, you know, I want to continue to find ways to to, uh, you know, uh, make this a better place to live. Uh, it's a great place to live. I don't know what you can do yeah. better, but OK, I can't fix maybe bring the price of the homes yeah. down. OK, OK. Unless right. you already own yeah, one. <laughs> I, I'll work on that one. Yeah. But um, I am working with the Police Foundation. Uh, I help them with some events, along with my friend Jonathan Knowles. Uh, we and our whole board of directors, we put on several events a year to do some fundraising. We just had our uh, a big um, event up at Testarossa. It was the Police Officers mm -hmm. Ball. It was our second annual, and we raised enough money to um, fund the K-9 division of... Wow. That's great. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Do you so, ever take time off? I do, I do. <laughs> As <laughs> you a matter of fact... You go back to Hawaii? Yes, I'm, I'm back and forth Bring to some Hawaii. Coffee back visiting with you. my folks. You know, they're in their 90s now, but oh. they're still very happy and healthy over Wonderful. there and have siblings over there. So I get to visit them. And uh, I have a little um, a little cabin in, in uh, Lake Tahoe that Good I you. retreat to. That's my place to go kind of uh, cocoon. And and as I was telling you earlier, if it wasn't for you, I'd be there right now. I took, <laughs> very I did, honored. <laughs> it's, very honored. It's snowing. I'll <laughs> go up later today after the interview. But um, I, I love to ski. Um, I also like to play golf. So if I can get out for, you know, nine holes of golf or a round of golf, I like to do that. And, and, um, and do you know yeah. everybody in town here? I don't know everybody in town, but they seem to know me. <laughs> I, I wonder why. Yeah. I wonder why. I, I, there are so many familiar faces. So when I walk down the street, I do say hi to everybody. I was I'm right. Like, you yeah. are Miss Los yeah. Ms. Los Gatis. You are wonderful. I mean, you well, are you are charity. You are hope. You are oh, faith. Thank you are you. probably the most wonderful person oh, I, that, <laughs> next to Linda Lester that I've met. Well, Linda <laughs> is. She is an incredible benefactor of Jazz on the Plaza, yes. of, of uh, KCAT, um, and many other fine projects in the community. I don't hold a candle to that woman's I generosity. Think, I think you're sisters and you just don't know it. Yeah, I, I think when you, you are. were in a parallel. <laughs> oh, Terry Holt. I know, we all love her. And I finally got her on the show. I'm so excited. And if you have somebody who is also like Terry Hope, and there are some people who are trying to get up there. I, I would love to talk to them, love to talk to you. Community storytelling, everybody has a story. You go to kcat.org and you nominate yourself or nominate that special person. And thank you so much, as I always say, for being with us and spending time with us here at KCAT TV 15.